Hey everyone, this is Judy with JLB Crafts. Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, thank you so much for giving me a try. Today I want to talk about traveler's notebooks. So traveler's notebooks are basically just pages of paper um, held together as like a leaflet. These are some that I ordered off of Etsy a while ago, and there's a name for this size. I can't remember, Skinny Personal or something. But they, this was a freebie I got from a different Etsy shop um, after I ordered a certain amount of product from them. And basically a traveler's notebook is just any kind of a folder, leather or plastic or paper that's got string. They call them strings, but they can be rubber bands or like leather thongs or they don't have to be stretchy. Um, and you just slide these books in and out of them. I, I would guess, based on the design, that this is probably one of the original planners back in, gosh, who knows how, how far back they go. Um, not much to this as far as manufacturing or anything. Um, I even have gotten them from Walmart. This is one of the ones I got from Walmart. Um, it's just a, a pleather, a plasticky um, folder and it's got strings in it and you can put all kinds of little notebooks in it um, as many as you want it came with a couple in it it's got card holders and as you can see a pen loop and it came with a few already in it um, so I, I like the concept especially if you do like art journaling or if you've got a pretty involved special project my husband and i are going to be um, looking for and building um, our our quote-unquote forever home over the next few years so I thought um, he you know if he had a notebook he wanted to keep with project notes or sketches since he's an artist that might be a fun way to do it so then I, I found out that Planners Anonymous as you guys know I do Planners Anonymous unboxings all the time not because I'm affiliated with them or anything. I just really love their product. And this is, they finally, after many years, came out with a um, their original melodies. They call them melodies because they're super flexible. You can do um, a ring bound planner, the ones that like a binder. You can do a disc bound planner. You can do, it's got strings. So you can do um, traveler's notebooks. I think that was how they originally started was traveler's notebooks. But they started with one that would hold a mini happy planner just by happenstance. Um, it wasn't designed for that, but it the size worked for that. They finally, this past year, came out with one big enough to hold a, a, a classic happy planner. And I was super, super excited because it comes with the strings. So I could finally slip a traveler's notebook in there. And all you do is open to the very center and put it around the string and this works great um it, it definitely there's tons of room it works just fine but as you can see it's 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 a little on the loose side and um i i thought you know there's just got to be a better way well then i came across um someone who found a, a video on um youtube by a lady a DIYer named Michelle Hotchkiss. I think that's how you say her name. Um, Michelle Hotchkiss. And she does all kinds of videos, lots of stuff on loom weaving and knitting and lots of traveler's notebook and DIY art projects, leather burning and whatnot. And three years ago, she did a video. Um, it didn't get very many views, but on how to make a an insert for discs. Um, so Michelle Hotchkiss, um, she hasn't done much more recently, but anyway, I wanted to play with that concept a little bit and look at making them myself, but I want to do mine. So she used um, leftover packing material from like buying a happy planner um, and keeping that plastic material, the same stuff that you would use to make a dashboard, say, to put um, post-it notes on or something, which I just thought that was a great idea, but I wanted to go further, one step further. I'm going to play with laminating. Um, so I've got a piece of vellum here. So this is that semi-opaque. This is from a Planners Anonymous kit. And when you get the full kit, the set of papers comes with 
um, a piece of vellum and a piece of acetate. And I just thought this would be fun to laminate this and use it to make an insert for um, a, no a, a notepad like this. So, um, and then the other thing is I have some leftover acetate. This is actually from the um, Sakura kit. This is from the Book Lovers kit. But I thought if I could laminate this, that might make a fun little insert. So I'm going to play with that today. I have not tried this before, so we might get into a little bit of trial and error. I definitely know, you know, whatever you want to put in your book, in your planner, you're, it's going to have to be slightly smaller. Um, so happy planner notebooks. Um, this is a normal eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. It will fit. Let me get to a white page so you can actually follow along and see what I'm doing. Um, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper can be punched and will fit, but we don't have too much extra space here. We have a little. So um, if you wanted to say, make your own traveler's notebook by folding a bunch of eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper in half, construction papers, um, lined, pa well, lined paper isn't going to work because your lines would be going this way instead of this way. Graph paper, you can, you can easily make your own inserts. A lot of people do, actually. Um, and then how would we put it in here? So that's what we're going to play with today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play with making one that will accommodate an 8.5 by 11 I forget what these are called, folios or leaflets, or there's a name, booklet. Um, we'll just call it a booklet for today. It doesn't have to be this thick, um, but we'll play with one that'll accommodate, that'll go into a classic size happy planner, and that will take eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. So I'm gonna um, get my cutting mat out and set up my laminator, and I'll be back. So I, was just, I wanted to start out by laying out some of the tools I know I'm going to need. My paper trimmer, a hole punch. This is a, a crocodile corner chomper or any other corner rounder would work. And this is the crocodile um, power punch. So it punches, punches a disc, I don't know if you guys can see that, a disc shaped hole um, as opposed to, and this will punch through anything. I mean, it'll punch through thin tin, it'll punch through heavy plastic, um, leather, it'll go through all kinds of stuff. So we definitely need to be able, I'm going to use 10 mil laminate pouches, so I definitely know I want to use that. So I want to try to make one, like I said, that'll, that'll accommodate an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. This scrap that I have from the Sakura kit is left over from um, another project. It is about, let's see here, it's about, um, it's about an inch and a half, it's exactly an inch and a half wide. So keeping in mind I need um, to put punches on here and cut a slit for my booklet. I'm just going to go ahead and fold this piece of paper in half, but uh, cut a slit for my booklet to go through. Um, if I laminate it, which I need to do because it doesn't feel heavy duty enough to accommodate all of that just on its own, um, I think this will be wide enough because I'll have my lamination bubble when I trim. Just trying to figure out what color surface you guys can see this the best over. Um, maybe if I switch it over, flip it over to the gold side instead of the silver side. With my lamination bubble coming out, it's going to be a little bit bigger, but I also don't want it to be so big that it sticks up out past the pages really far and gets confused for my fingers with a bookmark. So we're just going to try this. And I also, I want to go ahead and cut um, a piece of this Book Lovers um, vellum. It's a little bit brighter on that side of the same width. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one to be about an inch and a half as well. Let's see if I cut. So there's a, your, your paper trimmer does have um, a scale over here. So right here is an inch, so there's an inch and a half. So I'm just going to chop this at about an inch and a half. There we go. All right, so step one is going to be to put these in a 10 mil laminating pouch and laminate them. Um, so I'm gonna, I forgot to get my laminating pouches out. So I'm gonna get those out and I'll be right back and I'm gonna bring my laminator over to where it's on screen so you can see it. Okay, so I have one 10 mil laminating pouch. I have my two strips for the two different options I wanna try. I have my laminator warming up here. 
Hopefully you can hear me over the wine it's making. So I could probably fit more than two in here, but since I, I'm i still working on the design, oops, <laughs> okay, it's ready. <laughs> since I'm still working on the design, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave myself tons of space. So I'm just kind of putting these up inside the pouch at the top of the pre-sealed space, um, trying to get them straight. And I think I wanna go ahead, um, I just, I don't know why, I like the silver better than the gold, so I'm gonna put this with the silver facing up, just with plenty of space in between. Like I said, nice and straight. There we go. So, I mean, step one, really, that's all there is to it. If you're not gonna use packing material or heavy plastic, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and laminate it. And no, my laminator um, is not about to die. It self-sets its own speed based on, oh, and Calcifer is curious what's making the noise on mom's desk. Um, it self-sets its own speed based on the thickness of the laminating pouch. So it has slowed down. You're not imagining things. It, it scared me the first time. I thought it sounded like it was about to die, so. <laughs> Okay, so here's my pouch. I usually send it through twice just for good measure. It's got a nice, small, since what I put in there isn't very thick, it's got a really nice, small lamination bubble around the edges. You definitely want to make sure not to cut into that when you're trimming. So I'm going to clean up my desk and I'll be back. Okay, so I just grabbed the cover off my Happy Planner because the one thing I don't want is for this to stick up to uh, outside of the edges of my cover. So I'm gonna at least start by keeping it inside the confines of the cover. And actually it would be even better if it stayed within the confines of the pages themselves. So yeah, that's gonna work just fine. Um, actually I can cut it about, since I, ha I went right up against the lamination bubble there, um, I could cut it about even with the laminate on either end. So I think I will just kind of eyeball it and do that. I will cut the, the hangover so that it's about centered. So that's going to be step one is cutting this down. Your paper trimmer will go through 10 mil laminate as you just saw. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut them apart. Let's see. So. I know I want to make a slot because that's what the book's going to fit inside. Um, and then it really doesn't need to be much bigger. So I do want to leave space though for punches. So I'm going to go ahead and trim. I, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and trim about this equal distance all the way around. And that is going to be, is that smaller, small enough? Oh yeah, that's way smaller than my page. So mission accomplished there. So I'm going to go ahead, and like I said, this could be trial and error. I may get to the end of this and, and decide to do something differently the next time. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and go pretty much equidistant all the way around. I should have left a little bit more of a gap at the top there, but I mean, it's not, it's not going to be a big problem. Okay, so I've got about equidistant all the way around. We'll do the same thing to this one. And this sucker is, is sturdy. It'll hold a lot of weight. So ten, that's the one thing about 10 mil laminate. Now, if you don't, 10 mil laminators are expensive. They are, um, you know, office, professional office grade laminators. You can get a laminator, like the Amazon Basics laminator I used for years, and it, would do three and five mil pouches. Um, so you can get the effect of a 10 mil pouch just by sending it through once, sending it through twice. So you, you put what you wanna laminate into the pocket, um, you laminate it, and then you cut trim real close like I just did, actually even closer, and then you laminate, you put it in a second pouch and you laminate it again. And I have all of that explained in my video, my first um, how to laminate your own covers video. I will link that in the cards up above. Since I invested in the nicer laminator now, um, I don't have to worry about that. Now, before I decide where I wanna put the slit for this, 
I need to make sure that it's not going to stick out past the edge of my pages. So actually, let's go ahead and I'll mark this for where I need to punch it. No. First step, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, not, these steps don't really matter so much. I'm just going to go ahead and round the corners. So I'm using, like I said, the corner chomper. So you pop this open, and then you just need to decide, do you want a quarter inch round or a half inch round? I like the quarter inch round. It matches with what Happy Planner does. And like I said, this has no problem at all with the 10 mil laminate. So let's just go ahead and round all these corners. And then we'll be done with this tool. So now I'm gonna grab um, a tiny little fine tip permanent marker, any color. And I'm gonna mark where my first um, punch needs to go. So this could be, I could leave this with gold up or I could leave it with silver up because there's not really a directionality to this, to the inside. I, I said I wanted the silver and I still do want the silver. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball what the center is of this. Actually, I can put it right on top of my page too. It doesn't matter. Can you see it there? Yeah. Okay, and we'll go ahead and do this one too. Again, right at the edge, just kind of centered. There we go, I can see that one. Okay, so now I will get my power punch. And here's a little trick. If it's empty and you open where the garbage goes, you can see um, the punch hole, and that will help you line this up the very first time. I can see my, it's, I, it's not gonna show on camera, but as you can see, I can see through there and I can see where my line is and it helps you get the very first one so all right so there's my first one now actually I'm going to go ahead and do this one too now I can close this and use so it's got this little alignment tool once you have your first one you just fit that in the hole that you just made and do the rest there we go we'll finish this one up all right. Okay, so, so far we have two things that look like small bookmarks, um, but that will fit in a, a classic size planner, like so. And actually this one I can still use silver or gold. Okay, so the last thing we need to do then is make a slit in here to stick our booklet through. Um, and I, like I said, want to do eight and a half by 11 sheets. So I am going to, and I do want there to be some in, in between, but as long as my page doesn't come back out too far. So I think I'm going to go about, about centered actually, because I think it's kind of nice when some of this pattern shows, which let me zoom in a little bit more. So you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. And I know there's glare, there's just frankly not much I can do about it, so. And you don't want your slit to be too big because you wanna keep the structural integrity of your piece of plastic. So if I just kinda center this, yep, there we go. That leaves me, I'm very safely within the confines of the page. So let's just go ahead, so what I'm gonna do next is hole punch. And since this laminated inner part is exactly eight and a half by 11 and I need to comfortably fit inside that, I, I want my hole punch to be just slightly larger. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just using a regular single hole punch um, because I wanna keep the edge. I'm just gonna center it, but go a little bit outside of that. There we go, see? So I went off just off the edge just a little bit. So I've still got solid and I'm gonna do the same thing at this end. And I may regret eyeballing this um, because it'll result in a slightly crooked slot. There we go. So now I've got that hole See it down there? And I went, like I said, just slightly outside. So then all we're gonna do is at the very outer edges of these punches, we're gonna cut all the way down and connect the two punches so we have one big long slit. 
So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. And that's why I'm thinking next time I do this, I'm not going to snug the inner piece right up against that pre-made seal because that's leaving me a very thin edge here. By the time I cut right outside it, it's leaving me kind of not a whole lot there for structural integrity. That edge is a bit thin. Let's grab the paper trimmer. So I'm just going to line this up with that hole right at the very edge of my cut line. Oh, it's hard. There's not a lot. Yeah, it's sliding on me. Okay, so the other option we have, yeah, the other option we have is to use um, a cutting mat and a straight edge. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't want to mess these up. So I'm going to use a metal straight edge and a, uh, and a craft knife. And I'm just going to line this up right at the edge of the holes I punched. Now, you, this cut is going to work so much better if you don't try to do it in one swipe. So hold your ruler down nice and hard and make several passes. Don't try to cut all the way through on your first pass. Almost there. Having a nice sharp craft knife will also help. <laughs> I think it's time. It might be time for a new blade. There we go. Got it. Okay, now we're going to do the other side. Same exact thing. Don't cut your finger fingernail. So now you would have eight or ten or however many pieces thick your little notebook's going to be. And it goes through your slit. There we go. To the center and now you have a traveler's notebook insert. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other one real quick and then we'll put it all together in my planner. All right so let's go ahead and put my planner back together. Put my cover back on and my title page. Okay so let's say I want to have this. This is my transformer planner. Um, I, and I show, I have a monthly video, a move-in video, where I show how I set this up every month. So let's say I want my, um, let's see, I have post-it notes at the beginning of my social media. If, if we were going to embark on the project that I described to you guys earlier, working on um, a house design, I would put this probably at the back or the front of my catch-all planner, my home planner. So here is the laminated piece of vellum. And again, it, it's, a, it's a little bit thin, and I do have space to make it wider without coming up too far past the pages. So I think next time I do this, I'm going to go ahead and let my 10 mil laminate sheet be as tall on either side as the pages. Um, but here we go. We can snap it in just like a cover or a bookmark. And then we would take our notebook, flip it open to the center. And this would actually work um, with like a... a um, Oh, a composite notebook, um, a composition notebook that the kids get for school. That would totally fit through here. So any, you see how much space you have. Let me flip it over to the, to the white side. So you could put quite a bit um, thicker booklet in here. So, and then now you have um, a traveler's notebook insert that can go in and out of your planner and move all around. Um, here is the one that I got at Walmart. It is a lot, lot thicker. Um, we can put that. It's a little. This is a little tall for that. Oops, wrong side. <laughs> um, it, as you can see, it's got a good inch of space, but it would still work for this. Um, it might rattle around a little bit. It won't once your planner's closed. There we go. So now I've got that in here and I can actually even work in it a little bit or I can slide it right out if I need to um, and put it back in. So I can, I can pop this little insert out and put it wherever I want. And now my planner is really fat. 
you can see it in there, um, but it still works. So there we go. That is how you make an insert for a traveler's notebook. Um, I think that is just so slick. Um, Another way, like I said, I found some really beautiful hand-bound um, journals and inserts. You can put, like I said, now 8.5 by 11 in here. I have some ideas for um, sticker sheets that you could put in here. This is totally reversible. If I decide I want the gold side, I can flip it over, pop it right back in. So there we go. There is, that is a refresh. Thank you, um... Thank you, Michelle Hotchkiss, for the original idea on this. Um, I hope you like this video. I hope it gets you excited to try doing some new inserts and different things in your planner. Um, you can even do a top-down book if you're a lefty and you want a, you want a top-down um, bound in there. So anyway, I hope you like this video. I hope it gets you excited to try some new things in your planner. If it does, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you.